In June of 2024, Parkhurst released a whole new iteration of their Captoe Richmond and Delaware boots and their Plain Toe Allen boots. Finally, the Parkhurst brand fulfilled its promise in these releases and in this particular stitch down Allen, it really competes with Viberg by putting a tough looking distressed hide on a very stylish last. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the Wajik people as the traditional custodians of the lands and waters I work on. Today I'm delving into the first of a few Parker's June 24 releases that I bought as soon as they dropped. I've put up the unboxing of all of them already uh, and taken a few months to wear them in, so it's time to bring you my thoughts about them. The first one I'm reviewing is this stitch down Allen boot using Charles F. Stead's stone waxed mohawk on the new 618 last. Now I'm going to break down everything I just said in the construction section of this video, but first let's take a look at the aesthetics of the service boot pattern. This is a plain toe service boot in a 14 centimeter or five and a half inch high shaft measured from the top of the heel block. This Parkhurst Allen service boot pattern is elegantly slim heeled and wasted in shape, uh, widening out at the ball of the feet and then retracts back in an almost dressy almond shaped toe. The leather pieces are actually very simple. There's the vamp piece with the tongue attached, uh, two quarter pieces and a single boondocker style backstay. The stone colored uppers sit on a uh, lightly stained leather midsole, which itself sits on a black uh, rubber lugged outsole. The stitching on the uppers match the uppers, but the stitch down stitches are a contrasting white. The immediate impression is of a stylish, elegant, quite dressy shape, but with a rough and tough distressed exterior, uh, a perfect aesthetic combination of style and ruggedness. Sort of like Truman wishing it made Viberg looking boots or Viberg wishing it made Truman like ruggedness. This stylish yet distressed aesthetic also sort of dictates what you wear it with. You can wear it to the casual office and to social events where you match your partner's style and you can wear it on a hike outdoors. Now, I work in a professional office and when I meet with CEOs of client companies or their financial and legal people, I probably wouldn't wear this boot. However, in a casual office, uh, even on occasions where perhaps I'm meeting with my own professional staff, I'd certainly feel capable of pairing these boots with a pair of navy pants and a plain casual button-up shirt and a brown or khaki sports coat. Uh, the neutral color of the stone wax mohawk will easily match other earth and neutral colors like browns and blues. The shape of the slim last will not look too outdoorsy for the combination of dressy casual. As for social events, you know when you're going to meet friends at a nice restaurant and as you get dressed, your partner tells you she's wearing a decent but relaxed dark skirt and light blouse set. If you don't realize she's saying, don't embarrass me with your outfit, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> You can wear these boots to those events and pair them with a dark pair of chinos, in this case black, and a black long sleeve polo shirt. If you want to, or it's cooler, throw over it a grey sports coat because the uh, grey and the black would be brilliant together. But if your wife says, oh that's too dressy, leave the sports coat and throw on an earth coloured, in this case olive, Harrington jacket. Ultimately though, despite the stylish design, the uppers give these boots that jeans and go outdoors appeal. Probably my most favorite type of outfit to go with these boots is a pair of these salvage denim jeans I've just discovered uh, from a company called Wear Gustin, uh, link down below. And I'll put on a simple t-shirt and if it's cool, I'll, I'll top it with flint and tinders flannel lined wax trucker jacket for a really outdoorsy look. The wax canvas is a little warm if it's less cool, but in the change seasons, especially if it's wet, the tan goes perfectly with the stone wax mohawk. By the way, links to all the gear, both affiliate and non-affiliate, are in the description below. And before I continue, if you'd like to help out my channel, uh, don't forget to click on like, and if you haven't already, click on subscribe as well, especially if you like boot reviews like this. Now, 
Let me talk about the brand Parkhurst for those viewers new to Heritage Boots or at least new to the brand. For my valued long-term viewers, you can scroll ahead if you want. Parkhurst, let's start with them, was started in 2018 by owner Andrew Savisco. You can watch my interview with him up there and you should be able to pick up that he has a very clear vision of what he wants to achieve. He is very thoughtful and finally, in these June 2024 drops, I think he has finally fulfilled the promise he's shown us since 2018. Building his boots on his own self-designed lasts, uh, the original 18 last and then the 602 last, named after the landing ship tank or LST that his grandfather served on, uh, Andrew developed slim and stylish service boots that utilize different leathers like moose and kudu, uh, rough out shrunken suedes and tough veg tans, always combining the style of the design with the juxtaposed rough uppers. Parker's hit a snag during the early COVID years when his US supply chains dried up, went bust, and even his New York factory had to close. Parker spent a couple of years hardly producing anything, to be honest, and it wasn't until Andrew was thrown a lifeline by his former American suppliers in an introduction to a Spanish small batch and hand-guided manufacturing factory that Park has gradually expanded the brand's offerings. The culmination was in 2024 when out of the Spanish and later a Portuguese factory, Park has started producing the Capto Richmond and the Brogue Capto Delaware, uh, the Mocto Niagara and the Goodyear Welted Plain Toe Allen, as well as this, the Stitch Down Allen. Over that period, Park has modified the 602 last by adding a little volume and calling it the 602M last. And then when the stitch down boots were introduced, adding this 618 last. Now, I've been talking about stitch down and Goodyear welting and waxing lyrical about Parkhurst's lasts. So for viewers new into heritage style boots, go see my video up here about the four main types of boot construction. A last though is the foot shaped mold on which a boot is built around, making it look like what it looks like. A slim and almond shaped toe last will make a slim and stylish boot like this. A chunky toe last will create a chunky toe work boot like the Iron Ranger from Red Wing, which I have also reviewed in the early days of this channel. The uppers are lasted or pulled around the last, uh, temporarily affixed to the last and then stitched on to the sole construction. In this case, this is a stitch down construction boot made in Portugal. This means that the uppers are lasted then flared out when they are pulled over the last and that flared out edge is stitched down onto the midsole and in this case all the way through uh, to the outsole as well. You can see from the top two stitch lines but from the bottom only the one. One stitch line goes through the flared out uppers and the midsole only while the second stitch line goes all the way through. The, advantage of, uh, the advantages of the stitch down construction is that it's uh, said to be highly water resistant because uh, the moisture will just roll off the flared out stitch down uppers. And the way of stitching allows the boot to be resold as well once you wear out the outsole. Uh, I'm told that it's a little more difficult than resoling a Goodyear welted boot, but your cobbler can, should basically be able to cut the stitch that goes through the outsole peel off the rubber outsole without damaging the uppers and midsole stitch, and then glue on a new outsole and restitch the outsole to the uh, midsole and uppers. In this case, the outsole is a proprietary commando lugged outsole. The front lugs are slightly inboard so that from the side, you, you hardly see the lugs, which helps with the apparent dressiness of the boot, right? Uh, the heels uh, lugged top lift is glued and nailed to a leather heel stack which in turn uh, is glued and nailed to the insole construction. Uh, in this case, the heel stack is made up of a couple of slabs of veg tanned leather, uh, making it firmer. And the same veg tanned uh, leather makes up the two layered midsole, as well as the insole on the inside. Being a stitch down construction, where there's just a slab of leather insole and a, a double slab of leather midsole, I, I actually don't believe there's a core of foam filler layer inside. So this makes for a fairly firm feel when you put your feet in. And uh, while not uncomfortable, it takes a while to wear them in before your feet mold the leather layers into a really personally fitted kind of orthotic feel. 
When new, you feel every rubber lug landing on the ground. It's a do 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 effect. <laughs> uh, inside the boot, there is a leather half sock liner, I'm not sure if you can see it, under the heel that's glued onto a little rubber shock absorber pad right under the heel. Uh, the inside of the vamp is lined with a soft leather, but the inside of the shaft and the underneath of the tongue, they're not lined. The uppers are made from the UK tannery, Charles F. Stead's waxed Mohawk leather in their color that they call stone. I think this is priceless. My understanding is that Mohawk is very similar to Rambler with some derivation in the tanning formula. It is a shrunken suede, meaning I believe it's a split leather used to make normal soft suede, but shrunken by over 30% during tanning by the application of waxes and heat. So making it a, a far firmer leather. I mean, when you feel it on your hand, it, it doesn't fold over like soft suede. In fact, it feels really firm and structured to the point that before breaking, the reinforced collar does kind of dig into your ankle. Uh, on the inside, you can see the rough nap suede, but on the outside, which I think is the flash side of the, of the hide, you see lots of veins and natural variations of color, uh, streaking, even texture. Despite being a suede cut, this takes abuse and comes out really, I think, looking better for it. The tanning process not only makes it tighter in its fibers, but it also pumps it with hot waxes. So it's fairly water resistant and provides a, a living patina as you see the wear spots move around. The construction uses an external veg tanned uh, leather heel counter covered by the single piece backstay and a thermoplastic celastic uh, toe puff for toe shape. The tongue is semi-gusseted up to the last eyelet. Uh, this gives the tongue more structure, keeps out more moisture and dirt, and keeps it from slipping over from one side to the other. Uh, the hardware is antique brass, five eyelets, three speed hooks. They're all washed, and the speed hooks are very firmly backed. The stitching is very, very good. For a boot made ruggedly, not like a proper dress boot, there is obviously care in the clean, consistent, and measured stitching. The pieces are stitched together with uh, double and quadruple stitches where strength is required, and finer single stitches on the backing pieces of the lace facings and the collar. The edges of the leather are cut, they're not rolled, which gives it, I think, a rugged feel despite the slim last. I've used the leather laces provided, but they also come with round cotton laces if you prefer those. If I have to end this section about the construction with a negative, I think the tongue is a little short for my liking. The pattern is cut so that uh, the top of the tongue is just in line with the height of the collar. But my preference is to have a slightly longer tongue so that when you tie the knot, there is some leather it can move uh, up, down and around. Look, I can't say that I've ever had a knot slip off the top of the tongue, but it looks like it might because it's right level. And to me, it's just not aesthetically scaled. Moving on to leather care. Uh, how would you condition and care for wax mohawk? First, this leather is so beautiful with the waxes moving around with wear that you almost don't want to bother. I reckon the more scuffs and dings it picks up, the better it looks. I mean, fair dinkum. Conditioning this leather is likely to make it flat and very uniform. I personally won't be doing anything for a very long time. But look, if you really want to condition it, and aren't we all a bit trigger happy? <laughs> or if in the years somehow the waxes and oils that are packed into it uh, at the tanning process do wear off, Parkhurst says you can use a wax or cream like Smith's Leather Balm or Big Four. As I've talked about it all along, this is made in Parkhurst's uh, 618 last. It's a combination of the original 18 last with a narrower arm and toe, and the combination lasts at 602 last. If you're interested in how Parkhurst lasts have changed over time, go and see my video up there. I honestly thought the old 602 last was my perfect last, and when Andrew came up with the 602M, for me, I thought it might have been a step back because uh, it was a bit roomy for me in the forefoot. But as soon as I stepped into the 618, I was in boot fit heaven. This is the boot last for my feet. It is a combination last, meaning that it's not just one width. It starts with a B or C width at the uh, very tapered heel, narrow enough to lock your heel in, but not as so as to be painful, all right? Uh, it stays narrow, uh, but opens in width in the waist, providing a, a kind of tucked in arch support. 
then opens to a, a slightly over E width at the ball of the feet for room and comfort. The toe box is more of a point than in the 602, but there is extra length so that the taper into that point, it isn't sort of in, immediately sharp and squeezy. Uh, the taper is gentle enough through the length to give your toes room. There is a little less volume than the 602M, so it is sleeker in profile. All in all, I take it in the same size as the other Parkhurst lasts. I measure a US 8.5 in D width on the Brannock device. I wear a 9 in sneakers and in most US heritage style boots, uh, from Grantstone to Thursday, from Red Wing to Alden, uh, uh, Allen Edmonds to Truman, and in all the PNW brands, most lasts, I take a size 8. I take Parkhurst, whatever the last, in an 8 as well, and it's really comfortable for me. The break in I find is minimal, and the comfort and arch support in the 618 is great. At the time of preparing this video, and up to the time of recording, uh, this makeup is still available on the website. I have linked the website in the description below. Now, when I bought it, it cost me US $398 in June of 2024, and when I checked it, uh, it was still at that price. Buying in Australia, I paid 591 Aussie dollars plus about $50 shipping and about $65 in taxes. If you compare the US price, uh, if you're in America, they are cheaper than Truman boots at mid to high 400s and I think just as tough and well put together. Uh, Grant Stone sell for below 400 and Grant Stone is really finely made, although arguably it, it's made dressier and without the rugged looks of Truman or Parkhurst, despite the um, you know, rougher hides they use. Classics like Ellen Edmonds, Higgins Mill, or the Wolverine original 1000 mile boot go for about the same or slightly cheaper. But again, dressier old styles rather than modern rugged service boot styles. Looking uh, below and above the price range, the Red Wing Iron Ranger is mid 300s and the service boot of service boots, as well made as it is, the Viberg, go for nearly a thousand. Value-wise, for a stylish designed and tough leathered service boot, this Parkhurst Allen is good value. There it is. When I, when I started, I talked about how stylish this boot looks, and I juxtaposed it with, the, with admiring the ruggedness of the leather and the construction. I can't go past that image in my head. Stylish and distressed. If you like that look, that type of boot, you, you cannot go past this. Okay, I hope you like this video. If you do, just a reminder to click on that thumbs up icon down there. And if you haven't uh, subbed yet, my channel brings out boot reviews every week. So if you like this kind of stuff, mate, you should just, uh, subscribe. And doing both helps me out anyway, so go for it. Until next time, take care and see ya.